Hello ladies and gents, this is HJ, the host of the HJ Place channel and I am back from the abyss of hell. I've been gone for an absolute age but I'm finally back here playing Nactar and Totten Zombies of Random. So what a best way to start the rebirth of the channel with a new map. This is glorious indeed. I remember like the first time I played this map. Good memories. Amazing memories, absolutely fantastical, glorious memories of a better time in the zombies history, which we will hopefully be reliving this year with the start of the Zombies Chronicles map pack, moving on forward into the future with the, uh, the zombies coming out later on this year, the World War II zombies. Right now I think the future of zombies is looking very optimistic at the moment. But yes, guys, I'm playing Zombies of Randoms. I have four guys in the lobby who I've never played with before. I have no idea about their skill level, really anything about them. Ah, but this should be interesting, you know, that's what makes it fun, I think, because then you have no idea if the guys are going to be fucking noobs or if they're going to, you know, carry your ass or whatever the hell is going to happen. So it's unpredictable, and, um, you know, that's why I like it. I, remember, I also remember like back in the old days whenever I used to play zombies I'd play these kind of maps with uh, randoms all the time and that was how I, you know, I really enjoyed the game because whenever you play a randoms it's just like a completely different experience than playing a solo game or playing with friends because whenever you play a randoms like you know a lot more of the gameplay comes down to reviving people being a medic, being a team player you know trying to Look out for guys who are going to maybe like buy you open your doors, ruin your strategies, troll you a bit. For instance, every time I play Nacto, I always like to keep this door here shut. But since I'm playing with randoms, you know, some of them might open that door. And then that way I cannot camp up stairs up here. So that kind of ruins my whole strategy for the game. And if that unfortunately happens, then we'll have to rethink what we are doing. It's always slow at the start of these rounds. I mean, these are always the most tedious rounds in zombies, getting these out of the way. But, uh... I picked an act as well because I know it's one of the most hectic maps with all of the windows and all of the kind of crazy shit you get. No pack-a-punch. And that has a real uh, tendency to get intense with randoms at about round 20 to 25 plus, if we even get it that far, so... Yeah, I mean... I'm looking forward to this. And we'll just be kind of wait out the storm at the start by killing these foil peasants. God is on our side as he's raining down the rain of fire upon my enemies, burning them down into ashes and cinders. They will die before me in my gracious might. As a warlord of zombies. Maybe these zombies aren't appearing now because they are afraid of me. They have some sense. Stay away. They understand that I am too awesome for them to take down. I am too great and glorious for these mere mortals to be able to touch, to be able to scratch so much and harm me. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I am an all-powerful deity bringing death upon these peasants. Death, pain and bloodshed. Hmm. Pharaoh, that'll be alright for the uh, early rounds, I think. Help me get some points up so I can get the uh, the perks I want from the Wonder Fizz and the uh, the Thunder Gun and hopefully Ray Gun that I can get from the Mystery Box. I definitely want them guns. I'll maybe double tap on Widow's Wine and Jog and Quick Revive. That'll be sort of the ideal perk setup, if you will. I have a monster here. 
I bought a monster for the advent of Zombies Chronicles for this special occasion. And uh, yeah, it feels invigorating, absolutely. I know monster is probably a drug, it like has caffeine in it and all sorts of probably unhealthy substances, but it is the only drug I will give permission to go through my veins whenever I'm killing zombies at the moment. And hopefully give my brain the juice and power to kick ass, as it were. Give me the holy juices. Alright, we're on to round 5 now, so I'm hoping it's going to get intense soon. Fuck, I don't know what I was shooting at there, I thought there was a zombie there. But I think I was shooting into nothing. So yeah, I kind of fucked up there a bit. If that happens. Honestly, I think all will go well so long as nobody buys that sofa. You know, but knowing my luck of random, some of these guys is just going to be full retard on us and just buy that sofa and ruin the camping spot through the map. So. Yeah, I know it's inevitably going to happen at some stage, guys, and uh, there isn't much I can do about that. Apart from maybe be happy in a way, because that will make the map even more intense. Um, make there be even more deaths, which will give me a chance to shine even even greater by reviving all of these mortals. And mortal teammates and rising above them. But no, I mean... I don't want any of my comrades to go down unnecessarily and I would rather, you know, we could all play the best sort of game that we can play and all sort of shine greatly against the zombie hordes because in all honesty, why, you know, why would I want my teammates to go down? I want us to do well, I want us to get their high round and I want us to kick some ass, but Still, I think it would be a lot more entertaining for you, my true friends, to see a lot more deaths by the teammates, a lot more struggles, a lot more fields, so to speak, before we get to that high round, because whenever I was always watching YouTube videos, I always loved to watch random screw on and, you know, shit hit the fan, so to speak. I love to see people dying, you know, deaths happening, and uh, all sorts. I like that double points there. It'll hopefully give me some points like enough to get Widow's Wine or something awesome like that. Hmm, I think they've got some revive just fine. Yeah, I'm not going to lend a hand. I think they can handle it without their glorious overload. I did just pick up Quick Revive though with the revives on these weak noobs. Um. And I might sound like an absolute asshole right now guys, but I might as well stress the fact that I'm just joking here for the most part, you know. Obviously, you know, I respect these teammates to a certain degree. Well, I respect them until they open the store, so to speak. You know, once they open the store, they are dead to me. But uh, so long as they don't open that door, I will tolerate their existence. My squad <laughs> for a bit longer. Oh hell! Look, with randoms, you know, you just have to risk, uh, just have to expect anything, to be honest. And there is uh, nothing too shit for these guys to implement. And that's the sad facts of the matter, that is, that, that is the truth guys. Is he doing a glitch? Like, shit. Is that a glitch he's on? Is it? Nah. Nah, he's not hovering. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking there. I thought he was like glitched into the rubble. And I was thinking that would be quick, like, they, you know, they find glitches already and it's like the first day, but... No. That's all good. I wonder how many of the old glitches on this map would still work, like from the Black Ops 1 days and the World at War days, I mean, I think that would certainly be interesting to find out. Not that I glitch at all, like, I find it kind of pointless really, because 
it just makes the game too easy and I think a game's all about a challenge. You know. I mean like I think games like zombies can be manly and masculine because they're all about testing yourself, you know, pushing your limits. It's like, you know, friendly competition. Trying to prove yourself against all your friends and do the best in your group, so to speak. So yeah, all sorts of competition like that. I approve of it with the moderation, you know, gaming spine of the moderation and whatnot because it just helps you sort of strive to get better at, at the game, you know, it strives you to push yourself forward out of your comfort zone and push your teammates forward. And to be honest guys, you know, that's how anything good is achieved in life, it's by, you know, going outside of your comfort zone and, you know, uh, walking to areas not reached by the average mortal man, so to speak, if you get my drift. Like, all of the great men in history have obviously went outside the comfort zone, stepped outside the normal boundaries, so to speak, and, uh, you know, that's, that's a, a great reason why these guys go on to achieve greatness in the first place, really. So, I mean, yeah, I think competition's a wonderful thing. I think going outside of your comfort zone is a wonderful thing. And that's why I really like gaming as well, especially zombies of all things, because zombies is a really competitive game. It's probably like the most competitive game I've really played in, because I remember, you know, playing with my teammates and all sorts of zombies games like, uh, you know, as they say, World at War, Black Ops 1. And Black Ops 1, that was one of my most, you know, most of my friends played the game and that was the most competitive for me. I can remember like me and a certain guy from school. Uh, we'll call him... Nah, nah, we won't use names, but I remember me and a certain guy from school, you know. We used to like play on all of the maps, like Darius and all, we, always, we would always go for the highest rounds out of everyone and just smash the records. And uh, you know, yeah, they're, they're like some of my best gaming memories, sort of playing zombies with him. And you know, beating all the guys in my school. And we, we would only get to rounds like round 26 at the time, or round 34 at the time. But I mean, this was back in 2011, so round 38 was fucking glorious at the time. Or, you know, round 34 under Reese was a ginormous achievement for us, and we, we just felt like we were, you know, gods of the school for getting to such high rounds and just doing so well. But of course, you know, nowadays, um, nowadays I think he still plays zombies, it's just he plays on the Xbox. You know, obviously I still play on the PlayStation, PlayStation 4 now, so. I don't really play with him much anymore, which is unfortunate, but I suppose I still hold on to the memories, and that's the most important thing at the end of the day, because memories are here to last. Oh yes, one minute. Yeah, Dad. How much do you owe me for the map pack? Well, I bought it with my own. Did you? Yeah. Bought it with my own car. No, I bought it with my car. Yeah, here it is. Oh, sorry. Uh, you sent me an email. Cheers, man. Right, don't know. Maybe it's because the account's linked on your email still. But I still use my car. Hmm. Myself, you know, commenter. Well, that was uh, kind of awkward, but that was my dad coming in. She's trying to say that, um, you know, I bought the map pack and he thought, you know, I bought it with his card because he got an email for it. But that's, no, I mean, I bought the map pack with my own card. It's just whenever I set up the account eight years ago, I was maybe like 11 at the time, so I used his email address for it. So I still have his email address on the account. So I used my card, but he got billed, or he got sent the email for the bill, so to speak. He got the email about it, I think, because he has the email address on, but yeah, I bought it with my card, so that was a slight misunderstanding there. And I may look into that, you know, check bank statements to make sure I definitely bought it with my card, but I know I did, because I... Obviously, just bought it there today myself. I've seen it with my own eyes what happened. Mm. <sighs> ah. 
take a step back and be drinking. Mate. 